Um, our first speaker is Jackie London. Are you all set, Jackie, with your slides? You hope it's there. Okay, me too. She is a professor at the Paris Diderot University and has been very involved in Down syndrome research uh, and uh, patient support groups for a very long time. So we're happy to have Jackie here. First, I want to thank. I'm sorry. I want to thank very much uh, Peter Elliott to, to have uh, organized this meeting. Thanks to David, his son, and I think thanks to all the person with Down syndrome, because we are working for them, and we should uh, pursue to continue to work for them, and not for us. Uh, so, uh, uh, as uh, uh, I was told I am, I am in the field since 20 years and I am also a mother of a partial trisomy uh, girl uh, who is 36. Uh, my field is mice but as, uh, as we have settled 21 years ago an association for trying to make parents to think that research is not only necessary but absolutely compulsory to get some medication. Uh, so I am interested also in all kinds of aspects about Down syndrome uh, person. So I'm working as, uh, on different type of mice, but today I will just talk about what it's a continuation of the talk of Mara, although I am not working directly on the cognitive improve improvement with EGCG, but I'm trying, I will try to show you how one compound can have different, um, um, as, can improve different aspects on Down syndrome person. So uh, in my own uh, uh, research, I worked with too many models, that's why I am not really very focused. And my weakness is that we don't have enough cooperation. For instance, all our mice, we could have done much more if we had more cooperation and more money. Uh, the gap to fill is cooperation to give mice to experts on other types than cognition, but uh, I will talk, talk to you a little later. So I will talk about the Alzheimer and Down syndrome aspects but on the reverse side. Not as Down syndrome will get Alzheimer, but as Down syndrome person have some cognitive signs and also other neural signs that are the same as in early Alzheimer. So combining the two aspects, we can using mice and using some aspects with patients, going further to understand uh, for the benefit of both. So that you have heard already, so I, don't, I am not going to talk about, but besides cognitive deficit, we need to have more precise cognitive deficit in early Alzheimer, and we know a lot for Down syndrome. Spatial temporal abnormalities, how they get to behave in spatial temporal uh, task, it's not, very well known, it's known a little bit, but not enough. They have poor smelling, and I talked this morning, and it's a sign of early Alzheimer, and it has not been, almost not been uh, acid in Down syndrome, sleep disturbance, and uh, also agraphian astral. Why I talk to you about that? Because the, some of these signs can be added to cognitive improvement to assay how this drug or the other or another drug can work. So that's the, the main chromosomes and the, the genes, and I will talk a little bit on jerk one a um, uh, And uh, so conversely, that's side important, conversely to the assumption that all T21 person will develop, and that was settled 20 years ago, uh, that they will get all dementia. 
uh, is dementia is not really more frequent in the DS population than the old general population, but occurs earlier. And as we have seen this morning, the course of the dementia is very uh, shorter, although the biochemical and physiological hallmarks are present very early. Some of the deficits that I listed above uh, is, are present early in childhood. It's not exactly known how early the plaques and the NTF and the abnormal APP metabolism is present. It's said to be present at birth, it's said to be present before birth, maybe we don't have enough studies for that. And these uh, occur early in the course of the disease in AD patients. Thus, pharmacologic intervention to decrease this deficit in DS may help to understand better early deficit in AD. And of course, all the drugs that are assayed for AD are also may help DS. Question. Uh, is the AD type neuroanatomy histopathology one of the causes of the cognitive deficit in people? We say that in Alzheimer's disease, it's the NTF and it's the plaques, but maybe it's another thing which provoke this and this. Although we have heard today that if we decrease NTF, we go better for the cognitive, improve cognitive. Why there is no dementia before 40 and 50 years, although there are the plaques? the abnormal tau, the NTF, and everything. Why, despite the presence of these R marks, only 40% of the DS person will develop dementia? Okay, it was said today that 70% uh, at the age of uh, 60 may develop dementia, but that's not, and the, today, the old person uh, did not have the same care as the person who are 10 or 20. So maybe we are going to rewrite the story of these uh, aspects. Role of the one a overexpression. So the main thing is the Mara already said, but it's also overexpressed in AD brain, and it phosphorylates two proteins very important as you heard this morning, tau and APP. So this, this deficit in mice can be reversed by drug one a inhibition. So the aim of this talk is to say that besides the uh, the fact that EGCG can uh, uh, reverse cognitive improvement, it might be beneficial for some of the other DS aspects, such as sleep, olfactive impairment, skin, air problem, obesity, everything. It's known that EGCG does many, many different things. But are these things related to Down syndrome? That's the main thing. So I will tell you, so that's green tea. It's involved in many things, anti-inflammatory, uh, indirect antioxidants, uh, it's uh, anti-proliferative, uh, and all this is the basic science. I will not go on. So if, uh, EGCG can be uh, important for neurological aspects, sleep, olfaction, hair and skin, and others. So just to report what is in the literature, and in neurology disease, it protects against, uh, it protects, uh, it enhances neurogenetic properties, it regulates glutamate level, it is beneficial against hippocampal neurodegeneration. Uh, related to APP metabolism, it reduces the cleavage of APP, it induces alpha secretase, which is very important. So it may be a potential strategy for AD, which has been quoted uh, years ago by Udim in uh, Haifa in Israel. Uh, it remodels mature amyloid beta fibers and reduces cell toxicity. And a recent paper has shown that EGCG can be given in nanolipidic particles and maybe uh, increase the bioavailability bio and induce secretors. So it may be a good thing. Sleep. I will not go very deeply, but just to, to tell you that in early Alzheimer's disease, there is sleep disturbance and, uh, which comes from a cholinergic deficit, and it can co it correlate with EEG power that we have been talked this morning. In DS, we have a big, big sleep problem with increasing sleep latency, increasing apnea episodes, and sleep fragmentation besides apnea. So it may correlate it at least with cognitive deficit, at least. So sleep and uh, ID and DS, we have, uh, there is uh, uh, models for 
uh, AD with uh, mutated genes, uh, uh, many, many studies, not many studies, but at least some studies have shown that APP overexpression and deposition of A beta disrupt the mechanism that regulates sleep physiology. We have word on that. I will not show you uh, the results, although I have two slides, uh, but I want to go further. TG APP mice, wild type, TG wild type dirk one a and EG treatment in control mice, but just preliminary result. This one show that presence of sleep prevention. This one, this shows that there is an increase in microarousal after deprivation. There is a decrease in wake duration and increase in microarousal. That means that both APP and dirk one a are involved in sleep fragmentation. And we wanted to see in control mass if EGCG does anything, and it does, at least preliminary results, it increased the wake and it decreased the sleep fragmentation. So that's one thing that could be assessed. That's the results, that's the way we, we do this result so that the role of APP, that's APP, that's the, uh, that's the EGCT treatment, wake increase, and this, and this, and this. So I'm not going to go. Um, stabilization and transforming memories during sleep. What's that? Wow. So just to show you that sleep in, is in the memory, in the activity, and it, it is involved in many things which is related to brain consolidation. Olfaction. It's known that in uh, AD, and that's a, an old thing, 200, by, uh, uh, by Devanen, and in the course of Alzheimer's disease, you have an increase of uh, uh, low olfaction. And the first area where NTF are present are the anterior and transanterior areas, and uh, the sinai plaques and the NTF uh, are the ones which are olfactory bulk and where the cholinergic activity are reduced. So there is something there which can be used also. Uh, I will just show you that this one, discrimination is decreasing when A beta is increasing. Okay, what's going on in DS? That's an old, very old, it was reported in 94, that's an old stuff. Down syndrome of poor discrimination, uh, and this discrimination is uh, increasing in function of age. That's the number of uh, the, in the, uh, in the identification, child, and uh, when you uh, go uh, in adult, young adult and adult, you have an increasing in function of age uh, of the deficit in other. It's related also to APOE, although APOE epsilon 4 is not completely related in DS with AD, but there is uh, an, an effect of uh, the people with Down syndrome and epsilon 4 for APOE have less uh, discrimination of other. So we don't know anything about models, mice model of DS and other. It has not been assayed, and we don't know the benefit in mice of EGCG. Hair and skin, that's uh, reported, very, very rather recent, potential effect of EGCG in hair. You know that they have alopecia, and that can help, maybe. Uh, we have to have a group of persons with alopecia and check if uh, EGCG will work. Skin, there is an, uh, an effect of the, the uh, EGCG in human skin too. Uh, other effect in some aspect of T21, there is report that EGCG can be benefit uh, for obesity in human animals and in, anim in animal, in human analysis, <laughs> sorry and in uh, animals, so it's very recent reports, but that's maybe very important. In diabetes, there is also reports uh, of the role of EGCG uh, type 1 and type 2, and we know that there is an incidence of these both type of diabetes in Down syndrome. Anxiety and aging, there is now some uh, report about uh, aging which is induced by the galactose and is reversed by EGCG. So, uh, minding the gaps, 
tools, decide what are the main points to be studied and solved. Development and aging, we need also more precise clinical and subgroup of patients to study correlation between clinical aspects of the pediatric one, but because we do not have. We need a very large campaign for people with Down syndrome to be their best advocate for research. I think these people now, the young one, the one, the young adults, can do things that we have a, a real good campaign. People, we need students with various backgrounds to be interested in DS. Uh, we need fellowship. We need money for very large studies and large grants. We have, in, at least in France, besides the Fondation Les Jeunes, we don't have any money, not, not a penny, from the government. Uh, and there is no any more uh, grants from uh, the European community, as you may know. We need to push our government to push area to continue. Okay, make families to be sure that research on DS is credible and will help. That's one main thing. Ask the family and DS person to help us on what they need, and with them, we have to decide what they want. Uh, how cognitive improvement at all age, avoid depression, backwards function, help for sleep, skin, and other day life problems. I just found in France that people, that there is a group uh, who research on developmental of teeth and aging on teeth, and we know that Down syndrome persons have bad teeth development and bad aging development. And that we can, if we have money, we can give our models, mice model, and show many, many things. Thank you. <laughs> ah. but, uh, so I, um, sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, Mara can answer for that. Yeah, we didn't find changes in folate. But at the dose we use. I wanted to, to say something to you because I found it very interesting. Uh, just let you know that uh, we have checked the olfactory function using the habituation, dishabituation test, both in trisomics and diaconate transgenics, and we see an age related impairment in olfactory discrimination and recognition. That's proof that working with mice can help men, and asking good questions from human beings may go to look in mice the right things. In fact, we wanted to use it as a biomarker of EGCG efficacy in humans. Good. Thanks, Jackie. Appreciate it. Okay. okay. So, thank you.